After planning, building, and doing the upholstery for this custom subwoofer box that is going to hold four tens, we are finally ready to install. I need to wire these subs, mount them, do some initial system settings, and finally, the moment we're waiting for, take a listen. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Can these 410s in such a small air volume sound amazing? Let's get these installed and find out. In the last video, you guys got to see the custom upholstery that we did on this with the carpet on the top and the vinyl on the inserts here, along with the sides. Let me get this flipped over for you guys. Looking at the bottom of the enclosure, this is going to hold one, two, three, four, ten inch subwoofers. The subwoofers that I'm using are four of these. This is the JL Audio 10 TW1, which is a shallow mount subwoofer and excels at using a small amount of air volume. These come with a subwoofer grill already installed, which is also nice for these small space applications because for something like this with the down firing subwoofers, if something were to get under there, I don't want it to be bouncing against the subwoofers. And with the grill, I don't have to worry about it. Also, this subwoofer doesn't have any venting in the back center of the magnet. Instead, all the cooling is done on the sides of the subwoofer, which is great because we don't have to worry about the subwoofer being up against an internal wall inside of the enclosure. A question that often comes up though is how exactly do we connect the wiring for all of these? There's multiple subwoofers. They might be dual voice coil or single voice coil. How do we know what to do? Well, I have a good recommendation for you guys with our show sponsor Crutchfield and their subwoofer wiring diagrams. On Crutchfield's website, they have many different tech articles, and this one here allows us to pick exactly which subwoofer wiring we should use for our application. In this case, I'm using a mono single channel amplifier. I have four subwoofers, and this is also a good idea for when you're picking out your subwoofers to see the available options. I know that my amplifier is capable of low impedance at one ohm that will get me the max power output. So I'm gonna do my four single voice coil four ohm subwoofers, which is what I have. And it gives me this wiring diagram here that I can use. Wiring can get complex pretty quickly, especially if we were using something like dual voice coil subwoofers. Let's take a look at these two ohm models here. See all the wiring here. This would allow us to have a one ohm load at the amplifier with all of this parallel and series wiring. Don't forget also on the Crutchfield website, we can add the year make and model of our vehicle and we can pick a couple of different options about our system and Crutchfield will then be able to give us options for a radio that we could upgrade along with all the different speaker sizes that will fit. If you guys wanna learn more and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, check out the link down in the video description. Now I'll be using several different tools during the wiring process and the first of which is this one, my Joe Car cable stripper. This works perfectly for speaker wire like this that has two layers of insulation. I need to remove that outer sleeve in order to expose the inner wires. And I wanna make sure that I do that at a certain length that's going to allow each wire to reach from the center of the subwoofer over to the terminal. Now, just because I'm a little obsessive with the details, I wanna make sure that each wire has the same amount of outside insulation removed. So here we go, we've got the three different connecting wires between the four total subwoofers. To give that transition where we've removed the insulation from the wiring, a little bit more of a finished look. I'm using some heat shrink tubing and shrinking it down here with the heat. The next tool I'm going to be using is my wire stripper. If you're using one of those wire strippers where you have to clamp down and then pull away, I strongly recommend upgrading to something like this if you're doing a lot of wire stripping. With this, you can see that the right side will cut into our wire first and then it clamps on the left side secondly and then it pulls and removes that insulation away. This makes stripping multiple wires quickly a complete breeze. Next, I'm gonna take a spade connector. Obviously, I'm gonna put it on the wire and I'm gonna crimp it down using my third tool that I like to use, the wire crimpers. And once again, I apply some heat shrink just to seal up that connection. Now, obviously on some of these terminals, I had to have two of the wires going in and then crimp it down. That way I could have everything ran in parallel, but I've got my wire completely prepared now. We now need to get each of the subwoofers mounted into its mounting hole. And in the past on the channel, I've used these. These are a threaded insert along with a machine fastener. And the advantage here is by using these, you can take the subwoofer in and out of the box several different times without degrading the quality of that hole. If you want to see a related video on how to use these, I will add a link. 
In this video, just to switch things up and give you some best practices for when you are using wood screws to mount your subwoofers and speakers, I wanted to talk a little bit about these. So these are a wood screw, but notice that they're not a coarse thread drywall screw. Don't use drywall screws because those have the angled head. These are called pan head screws. You want to use these instead, and if you're buying them, try to get them in black so that they blend in with the sub. Before we mount the subwoofer in the hole, we will obviously connect the wiring. And a little trick that I like to do is I like to plug in a multimeter to the end of my wiring. And as I connect each subwoofer, I just like to verify that the ohms value is what it should be so far. In this case, I have two four ohm single voice coil subwoofers. They are currently wired in parallel, so I should expect to see a two ohm load which I do. This is just a good way to make sure that you're not making a wiring mistake before you secure all these screws because like I mentioned, we want to avoid having to take these out if we can. Now, rather than just taking a wood screw, putting it in the hole and sending it home, I like to use a center punch to start the location of that hole. So obviously I'll center it in the hole there and I will do a punch. Using that center punch gives the tip of each of our screws a spot to start into the wood and it helps to avoid that issue where you're trying to start a screw and then all of a sudden the screw slips over and your bit slips off of the screw. Having that little divot in the wood just allows this to get a better starting bite. Now if you are going to use a power tool to drive these screws, you definitely want to get one of these here that will slip over the screw like so and it's also magnetic so it holds the screw in place. And then as we drive the screw into the subwoofer enclosure, it's going to prevent us from falling off the side. Honestly though, although it's time consuming, I really prefer to use a hand screwdriver just because I can get a really good feel for once I'm fully tightening the screw in to make sure that I don't strip the screw in the wood. This also allows me to be a nerd and line up all of these screws perfectly. Also a side note that I forgot to mention that I remember now that I'm doing the third subwoofer, I like to tighten these much like if you're attaching a car to a vehicle. I like to start here and then go opposite here and then opposite here, opposite, here, opposite. That way you're getting a fully even tightening pattern. I don't know if that actually matters. I've just always liked to do it that way. Let me know what you guys think. All right, all four subwoofers are now installed. Let's check our final impedance here. That checks out, we should be right around one ohm, so we are good to get this mounted in the vehicle and installed. All right, our four 10 inch subwoofers in the custom enclosure is fully installed. I've got it mounted to the seat brackets in the back of the vehicle under the seat. And guys, not only does this thing look amazing, I did an initial tune on it, just setting the crossover points. I set a high pass crossover at like 80 Hertz and holy cow, it has a ton of output and it sounds super good. I was playing a couple of my favorite rock and EDM tracks and the amount of impact these subwoofers have in this enclosure, just that quick bass, poof, that punch. Holy cow, it really hits you in the chest and it feels good. And then even the lowest of lows, if you guys are familiar with the Young Jeezy song put on, it has four bass notes that it goes through and it's like high to low. Even that lowest note that's hard to hear because it is so low, but you more just feel it. You can definitely feel it. I'd play those tracks, but I gotta be careful with copyright. So I do have a couple of royalty free tracks from YouTube that we can listen to. All right, so this first track I wanna demonstrate for you is called Species from the YouTube audio library. And this is purely just to demonstrate some output. Also keep in mind, whatever system you are listening to this on, that's what you're actually hearing. You're not here in person with me listening to this system and getting a full understanding of what this actually sounds like. But nevertheless, I know that you guys always like to hear a little bit of a sound test, so let's do it. The next royalty-free track I wanna play is called Plenty Step. This has a little bit more of an acoustic vibe to it. Let's listen.
So if you were just joining us at the tail end of this project, don't forget that I have videos that detail every step along the way here on the channel. I still need to do more of a formal tune now that everything is installed in the vehicle, but otherwise this project is complete. So question for you guys, what kind of project would you like to see me do on the channel next? I definitely have a ton of cool ideas for upcoming videos, so if you are new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Next time you need help with picking out the gear for a car audio system, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You can learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Mike, Jim, Jerry, Mo, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible, and thank you for tuning in and watching.